Okay, cool. Daddy's all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Let's start. All right. So hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Shauna K. Lester, founder of Memorable Essay College and Graduate School Admissions Consulting. I help ambitious individuals get into the colleges and graduate schools of their dreams so that they're able to use those opportunities to create the kind of life and the kind of legacy that they want. Today I'm talking with Atekana Nyama. Do I have it now, Atekana? Yeah. Okay, so I'm talking with Atekana Nyama, and she's a Questbridge National College Match finalist. What that means is that she's really a big deal in the making, <laughs> and as she is, and I'm absolutely proud of you, Atekana, and today we're going to have a conversation about your journey to college, because she's going to college, only one of the most prestigious colleges in the United States in a couple of months. But I'll let her tell that story and also let us know which school it is and what she's looking forward to there. So thanks again for coming on to talk. You're welcome. All right, so could you start by telling us a little bit about who you are, who is Atekana? Okay, so Atikana. <laughs> so I am a 17 year old girl who um, currently attends Eleanor Roosevelt High School. I moved here when I was 11 with my family to join my mom, who is currently living here. And ever since I went through middle school, and I can't wait to graduate high school and begin this college journey. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, what are you looking forward to in this college journey since you brought it up? What are you most looking forward to? I, I wanna try a variety of classes. I, I'm interested in African studies and biology because I aspire to become a doctor one day. Um, and just like, there's a lot of things that interest me and I think college like opens the door for me to explore in those fields and just learn <laughs> okay all right yeah exploration and learning makes sense so if we can kind of dial back to last summer if it seems you know not too far away <laughs> like that is the life could you tell us a bit about where you are and what your thoughts were about the college search what were some of the things that were frustrating for you what were some of the things that you were fearful of I was a bit nervous because I did I had no idea what I wanted in a college or like I just I didn't know much about the college process and I remember when you'd ask me questions I'd be like I think I'll be fine with anything like I didn't really have a pinpoint of what I wanted and it was just like the SATs like trying to be the perfect candidate for this cruise and I just didn't know if it was good enough and it was very stressful not knowing what I wanted not knowing if I was enough to be like in a college that can really help me develop my strengths mm -hmm. so yeah okay that's funny because at no point do I remember you saying to me I wonder if I'm enough so it's interesting now to hear that you were thinking that because I think from the first time I met you I was like yeah <laughs> She's enough, but that's interesting. I didn't know you were you were thinking that. So is it just that all of the different things that you had to do were frustrating, sort of balancing them all? Or it was just overwhelming thinking, hey, I could do all these things, but still not be enough? It was both. Okay. So the fact that I had all these things to catch up on and to do was very stressful, and it's like, you kind of have to show them that the college administrators that you're well you're a well-rounded student and it's not only about the academics you have to like show them who you are the things you do outside of school and what really makes up like atikana and also it's like thinking knowing that you may qualify you may be the perfect candidate for a school but still a spot for you in that school isn't guaranteed it's kind of like overwhelming like you put in all this work and still you, you're not like certainly sure if you're gonna be chosen hmm. so yeah all right well how did you get the courage to start anyway and just to get things going I mean even if you're unsure of the journey taking a step towards it it's like the only way you can keep keep it moving like I think 
I gained courage from just accepting that this is the process, this is what is ahead of me, and just like trying anyways, and like, like knowing that I'm trying to the best of my ability, and whatever happens, I know that I did my best. I think that's what got me like writing those essays and like studying for the SATs and just keep on pushing. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you said that a lot, that for you to get through times that you keep your eyes on what's ahead. And I could see that, you know, like the times when you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to write the essay and you're on the train and then you go home and the essay comes and, you know, I'm not doing all of this with you, but I'm wondering how are you doing it? Although there was a time when I was doing it too. But I definitely had many moments of thinking, how are you doing this? But I think you did do a good job of keeping your eyes on where you were going. So how did you balance it out? So I guess if you could give us an idea first of what you did with your schedule and your own time management, perhaps between August and December, to make things work. Although the college search process starts long before that. But if you could just give us an idea of August to December and how you managed your time. I'm actually going to start in July because I think that's when I met you. Yes, yeah, that's when we met. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so in the summer i kind of this was like the last summer for me to really indulge in like activities to you know put in my application and stuff so i was interning at columbia um so i had this lab research that i was doing there and at the same time i was studying in for my sats and retaking it and at the same time, I was kind of searching up on colleges and like what, there's a bunch of colleges in the United States and like, it's like, how do you choose one? So I remember in the mornings of July, I would go for my internship and then I'll come home very tired because the things they, <laughs> the things they thought was just like a high level. So I'll come home like, oh God, what did I just learn? Or like, I'll go over my notes and I'll just try. Yeah, I'm like, what is that word that they said in the seminar? Like, I try to, like, kind of catch up on whatever um, lectures or whatever we learned in the lab. And then I would search up college stuff, um, just, like, things to look for in a college, like, what classes they offer and stuff. And then I would go to Khan Academy to study for SATs. And then that would be my day for July. And I think when I started meeting you, when I met you, um, we started working on um, the QuestBridge essays. Right. So then to incorporate that into my schedule. So then I started working on those essays and kind of like really, which led to my personal um, statement actually. So I did that also. And I had another after school program that I used to do, which continued in the summer. So I would go there and we did a bit of yoga, acting. Um, yeah. And they they also helped with like college stuff. So I did that also. So I did that throughout, I guess, my internship ended in July. Mm -hmm. So then August I focused really on the Questbridge essays which were due in September so that and the Questbridge essay the Questbridge application in the whole was a whole bunch they had two major essays and a bunch of short responses with like word counts and like characters so it's like I had to make sure I was meeting those requirements and communicating with you back and forth to like make sure we were on the same page I still was studying for my SATs throughout the summer and then school began in September, which had it on some heat, because then I actually have, I have a whole planned day throughout the weekdays, and then I have to decide what, how to manage my time after school. So I spent my after school really focusing on Questbridge and college-related stuff. So I used to do track, but for the purpose of the college um, application, I didn't do winter track. I plan on returning in the spring. Um, so I focused on that. And then I took my SAT, I believe in August. I don't remember. But it was around that time since I was studying. And I 
surprisingly increased a hundred points. I was so surprised. So it showed that like, it was kind of like a great motivation because it showed that my hard work wasn't like being put to waste. Mm -hmm. So let's, I'm going to speed forward. So from September to I think December, I was basically working on my um, course bridge application because that was my main focus. Mm -hmm. uh, I plan to not do any ED or e EA and just focus on QuestBridge since it had like certain um, um, commitment to not like ED or EA anywhere. So then I just focused on getting all my documents ready, all the financial aid stuff, and all the support I can get while still like doing good in school and getting good grades. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so when did you hear from Questbridge? The final decision or because I heard from them October 16th uh -huh. that I was a finalist. And then I was like, okay, now I'm more with you. <laughs> <laughs> so then I heard from them again December 1st. <laughs> saying that I was marched to Amherst College mm -hmm. with a full ride. <laughs> yeah. Um, and could you just tell us how you felt, I guess, opening that after all of those months and really years of work to get there? I, before opening it, I was scared. I was scared of being rejected after all this hard work because it was a possibility that I had to consider so I saw their email at 3.32. I was still in school with my friends and I saw it, but I decided to wait to get home before I opened it because it was kind of like a personal moment for me. Right. I spent all this time working on this application and I, it just, it meant it was a big decision and it meant a lot um, to me. Right. So I really needed like a lot of like courage to open that email. So I got home around five and I open up my computer and I just, I, I see the email, but I'm just like thinking about opening it. And I didn't, <laughs> until my I friend, I, right, that question was probably coming back to your head. The good enough question. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> what do I do if I get rejected? That was the question. I knew either way I was going to cry. <laughs> oh, okay. I knew if I was rejected, I would be sad and I would cry. And if I got accepted, I would be overjoyed and I would cry. So I called my friend. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, should, do you want to open this for me? Like, uh -huh. what do I do? And she's like, I kind of open it. You already got it. Open it. And I'm like, you're not, you're not sure. So I opened it. And all I see is you have been matched on the top of my computer. And I started screaming in my room. I was just so excited. I didn't even read the email to see what um, college took me in because I ranked to, um, 11 colleges. Mm -hmm. I was just excited that I was matched like because it guaranteed that I would be going to a high privileged school for free all four years. So just seeing that tag on that computer, I just didn't know what to do with myself. And then after all that screaming, <laughs> I finally read the message and I saw that I've been matched to Amherst and then right there I just broke into tears and I just couldn't believe that, you know, I was worth it. And to read that they only chose 19 people out of about 900 um finalists to be part of that into you know this whole process and just believing in myself and believing in the things you told me and just like everything that i followed just worked and i was just so humbled and it was just like a, like an undescribable feeling like it was very satisfying and it's it's like, it's a moment that I think I'm going to hold on forever because it's oh. just, it meant so much. Oh. It meant so much. Oh. And you said your daddy was wondering what was wrong with you, right? Yeah. 
I was screaming in my room and my dad was like, are you okay? And I'm like, daddy, you don't understand. Cause the thing is, daddy, my, you don't, get it. <laughs> don't, you don't get how far I like, I have come to achieve this. Cause they did know about the process, but you know, not being um, from America, they didn't really know much about, you know, the things that I had to go through to really get here. They didn't really understand the curriculum, the process. So everything was really me. And then I would tell them bits by bits as, you know, we went on, you know, the great news. (laughs) They didn't really get to like, they did know I was working hard, but they didn't know much about the process. But they were very excited. And I got to tell, my mom was in Ghana at the time. So I just, I tried calling her. It was late here. So I knew it was like midnight there, but I still tried calling her and it took some days to let her know. And when I told her, she was just like speechless. She just was like, Atikana, you mean you're going to go to college free for four years? I'm like, yes, mom, I am. She was just so excited and she was very proud of me. And they're just like, I believed in you. And we just, they, they were just very thankful. Yeah, I can't imagine as a parent. I think that would be a really huge relief because you're thinking, yeah. oh my goodness, this child is going to college, you know, if payment is um, an issue for you and all of a sudden it's just like, don't worry about that. So yeah, that's great. Yes, yeah, only a lot of the most prestigious scholarships in the country. So that's really, that's really amazing. Yes. And congratulations again. All right. So if you were to tell somebody about your experience of working with me, what would you say? It was, it was like very much needed because I, when I met you, I was sort of lost in this process and you were there to kind of like tell me that it's going to be okay. And you led me every way, every step through this journey with like my essays and I think some t- at a point I just like doubted if it's even gonna work I remember this one essay and I was like I don't think this is the right topic I don't know if I want to talk about this and you just like just attempt to write it and we'll see from there and it's it's good to have someone who knows what they're doing and who's there to guide you through it out um also i think it will be good to just trust the process and go along with it and like kind of like know that you're in good hands like shauna like got me and you would email me to check up on me to you know send me outlines on what to do what steps to take and like encouragement like it's just it was a great experience and i'm really really thankful for having you throughout this journey because honestly i don't know if I would be here like I remember (laughs) my main essay was like over I don't like it was a whole (laughs) I I just free wrote I didn't even check the words and to realize how you edited all those and cut it down to the amount of words needed like I'm very thankful and I think I like I don't I as I said I don't think I would come this far without you like I really needed you and you got the job done and you were there throughout the whole process and thank you so much for everything that you've done (laughs) you're welcome all right and so actually i just remembered that the stats that you told us before about questbridge and amherst could you repeat them because i think we kind of lost there for a little bit okay so in the beginning i think they had about sixteen thousand applicants Mm -hmm. and out of that um about nine let's see no out of 16,000 they only chose about 6,000 finalists right and of those finalists only 900 about 900 were matched and out of those 900 that was matched only 19 were matched to Amherst okay so yeah that that's that's huge. That is only nineteen. So basically, oh my god, <laughs> to like sixteen thousand, right? Yes. Yeah. It and it's I, I wondered like how did they choose like, and like to be part of those who were chosen. It's like how like I just <laughs> it's, it's so I don't understand, yeah. but I'm thankful. Yeah. 
Yes. And so what are you looking forward to at Amherst? Like why Amherst? Let us what are you excited about there? Well, number one is their open curriculum. I think that is amazing that they have that. That would allow me to really delve into um, my interests and really take classes that I enjoy and not just like the classes that are required of me. Mm -hmm. um, it's in Massachusetts, which I'm excited because ever since I moved to America, I've been New York based. So it would be, um, you know, a great place for me to, you know, kind of have a, like discover myself, have some independence um, and just like, mm -hmm. I just can't wait. Like college is, <laughs> I know it's going to be amazing. And they also have like a great support team. They have the resources that, you know, can really help me um, excel. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Okay. The faculty I had is amazing. So I, I'm waiting to go tour when my mom comes back from the so, Oh, are yeah. you, you guys are going to go together? Yeah, I was I was gonna go without them, and I talked to Aleno, and Aleno was like, "Wait till they come back," and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Can you imagine? I think that would be very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's great. Oh, yeah, I'm just so happy. I think that would be that would be really nice. And so you had applied for Questbridge before, and you didn't get it. Then we had a chance to work together, and I remember. I think you'll remember reading your story. And then talking with you and then being like, what's going on here? Because you're a perfect <laughs> fit, right? So I knew it was yeah. about the story branding and really just writing stronger essays about your experience, right? Mm -hmm. And I love doing that kind of thing. And I'm so glad that it worked out this time. But one of the things that I really try to do with memorable essays is to have people take away skills that they can use, that they can teach to other people, or if I'm not around. Oh, by the way, so Atacana is a finalist for a, another scholarship, which I won't talk about. I should have asked your permission to say that, but hey, we're just calling it another scholarship. So let's say in theory, you're going to do that on your own. I want yeah. to know what lessons have you taken away from working with me that you'll be able to use in the future? So I have learned that when you start, when you have an idea or you have a topic that you need to write, just free write and like really just put all your thoughts down. And then from there, you could go back. And I think one thing that you did was you look at the prompt and you selected what really they were asking. You always highlighted in green <laughs> <laughs> the main message and like the things that you're really looking for in that topic. And so after that free write, you go through the free write, like you revisit it and then you check for those messages, how, you know, the things that stand out, you cut out those that, you know, kind of already needed and you edit down to really get the main message to stand out because when I met you I think the essay that I had written before didn't really answer the question it was me kind of telling them about my experience without actually <laughs> accomplishing what they were asking me for right. so that's something that I have learned just like really examining the prompt that's before you and understanding it so that you can answer it to the best of your ability and to make them really understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And then we also had a problem with Atikana in terms of her excellence and just encouraging her to apply to other things and her saying, oh no, it's not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think you're a really good example of that student who's really accomplished and you're brilliant as well from your hard work, but then you'll start to like hold yourself back like, oh, I don't want, you know, too much sort of thing. So I guess without telling us everything that you've applied for, for the people who will be applying or they're considering applying to multiple scholarships, but they might be thinking no, even before they get them, like just applying, they're saying, oh, I shouldn't, you know, go all over the place. Well, I know. <laughs> I held back you know, a lot. Really you don't want to apply for more. <laughs> I held back because I, I think I was I thought I was doing too much I was like it's too much work like I mean but it's free money like who doesn't want free money and like the connection and the acknowledgement that 
you know you have this tag and like you know so just be open-minded if you see um any scholarship or any network or internship just anything that you you fit the requirements and you're interested in just apply for it because you never know like i doubted this some of the you know things that i came across and shauna was like i mean you can never have too much <laughs> so i applied to them and i i mean i was accepted which i was surprised but you just never know your options so be open-minded <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. it's like why would you sit there with this excellent profile and all of these things that you worked really hard to accomplish and then not apply and i mean you're not lazy so i know it was a case of you being busy but it's just like that's what scholarships are and they make you work for what they're trying to do for you they're trying to support yes. you and i do think that's actually very important not just at the college level but at all levels the application processes for the schools and the application processes for scholarships they're weeding out processes to see who cannot be bothered to do this work with these 12 essays or these 10 essays or these six yeah. essays you know or really just doing the the work on the introspection so i'm glad that you know that you decided to to show them everything that you have to offer because it's so much. Yeah. Okay, and I'm trying to see if I have any final questions for you. I think that my final question to you would be, what does it mean to you to be a Questbridge National College Match finalist? It, it means a lot, I'll start with that. Um, it means that I can, you know go to college being from a low-income family and it's like being from a low-income family i can still go to a high privilege college for free because i work hard because i i work towards my goals and i just never give up because sometimes people you know who really have good grades to be in such colleges and who really work hard to get to the place they are they are not really acknowledge for their hard work people are persistent and just keep pushing and they have that character that these colleges need but because they can't afford afford it they never get chosen and they don't even apply because they they know they can't afford it but Questbridge, Questbridge um opens this way where all these students can't be acknowledged it, it opens a door for me that it's like i can further my education without worrying about my financial aid or how my parents are going to afford for my college education so it just I think it's a great opportunity for me to explore my options and to keep being great and to keep you know educating myself without worrying about um socioeconomic like problems okay i love that you call it a high privilege high privilege school i'm just like i think is that your term is that something you heard <laughs> something i use a lot <laughs> oh okay yes yeah. so, well i guess everest is certainly a high privilege college um it's up there, it's up there. <laughs> yeah it's up there just a little bit um so at Tecana, um of course you know i came to you through your cousin i um you know, telling me, as I've told you before, oh, my cousin is really great. She's really bright. She goes to high school. She gets, and then he listed out all your grades and he said, oh, she's amazing. You know, I just oh. want you to, to work with her. And at the time, although I trust your cousin, I thought, well, you know, most people have these views about their relatives. But as I've told you before, I think you are a very solid and wholesome and driven young woman. Your drive is actually amazing and it was a pleasure to support you in terms of i know if i show this to you you're gonna take it and you're gonna just take it so far and do the most like when people say oh she's doing the most you're definitely doing the most <laughs> you know, even the slightest bit of of guidance that you get and so it was a really great pleasure supporting you and of course i'll be here because college the entrance is one thing and then you know maintaining it and making the most of yeah. it yeah so i'll definitely be here and congrats on amorous congrats on quest breed congrats on everything else that is to come because yeah. you more than deserve it thank you okay all right so is there anything else i didn't ask that you would want to say or that's it we're good
I think that's it. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank yeah. you so much. And I won't say all the best in college because we'll be chatting, but just congrats again. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for all your help and your support. I really appreciate it. Yes. And I feel that you do. I feel like every time you say thank you, I can feel like the thanks coming from your toes. So <laughs> People tell me I say it too much, but I mean, I mean it. That's why. Okay. I I remember on the yeah. um, the sheet that you did when you started like choosing the things that you wanted in a school. Like mm-hmm. you were saying you didn't want much, but you were saying that you want to go to a place where you're supported. And so I think you'll find that at Emerson. and I hope you find a lot of professors, you know, and peers who you can connect with. I'm sure it will be good times and that they'll really love you. you know, and then you'll be like, thank you. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so thankful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just thankful. 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 I'm thankful. Okay. All right. So um, take care. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks for everything. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> bye. Okay. Right. I'm going to cut this off a little bit.